for me, it's a wonderful moment to come together with a bunch of my peers who I don't get an opportunity to see during the year, um, as well as a lot of young people and people that work in other areas of cinematography. And uh, it's, it's wonderful that it's in, I don't know if you'd call it, I guess we'd call it provincial town in, in Poland because there are not too many distractions. And I, I know if we had this, they say, in Warsaw or in Paris, then everybody would be going every which way. But it, it, I never had the chance to go to Turin, but in Łódź and here, the, the local community is very um, accion, uh, very warm, welcoming, and at the same time, there's not. We're all we all tend to stick together, and we have good conversations and catch up with the things that happen in the year. And at this time, especially, there's so many technical initiatives that it's a wonderful place to be able to catch up on sort of world cinema, technical initiatives, things like that, plus see a lot of wonderful films, so that's why I'm here. I'd say I'm sort of a traditional cinematographer, but it, it, you have to stay. Uh, there's been probably more change in the last 10 years than we've had in 100 years, um, and so you need to be I think, you know, I feel I need to be, uh, well, I guess in general, one, if, if you need to understand your tools. So that, that's why carpenters go around like this, and otherwise you cut your fingers off. Um, so then you can use the full power of the tool. And But to me, it's basically kind of boring. So I, I, I do it by myself, and I try not to bore other people with it. So. That's my philosophy about it, which is a little unusual, I guess, but too bad. Well, he hires me, and then I shoot his movie. Uh, we don't talk very much. Um, usually, I, I would say we talk a lot, but we don't talk that much about the movie. Um, in, in preparation, and usually what I'll do is look at images and think about it, and, uh, and when I've refined a kind of what it seems to me an appropriate point of view, then I'll try to sh convey it to him in eight or 10, 12, 14 pictures that are, could be pictures, that, that, that pictures have nothing to do with the movie, but they're, pictures from art or pictures from photography or pictures whatever that basically visually illustrate different aspects of what I'm thinking about and and he'll look at them and then he'll normally if there's 12 or 10 of them will mean something to him and then usually the wonderful thing about Clint is if the two don't the two that get vetoed, he just doesn't say no, but he'll give me two more. And that way, I can kind of interpolate. We, we, that way, we each interpolate where we want to be, and we arrive at, you know, in a good place. Uh, so that's how we do it. It takes about six minutes. And that's, I mean, literally. I mean, it's actually, that's an exaggeration. It takes less time than that. Um, but uh, that's how we work and then once that's done and we just go forward and when we're shooting we well there's another funny thing actually if, if, if this goes on forever but um, in the morning I always am there before he is so I'll walk around and I'll stand where I think the scene starts and then he'll arrive and he'll say hello to some people and he'll see where I'm standing he'll come over and he'll say hi to me and then he kind of do this, and then he'll walk around a little bit. And if he comes back to where I'm standing, that's where we start. But if he stays over there, then I go over there, and that's where we start. Usually, we start where I'm standing. Uh, but it's not because I'm a genius. It's just I, I know how to make Clint Eastwood films because I've worked, I've worked with him so long. So that's...
it, it's a, it's a, for me, it's a fantastic way to work when I really consider myself to be incredibly fortunate to have been able to have what somebody pointed out this week during the festival. They, I said, how long have you been with Clint Eastwood? And I said, 32 years. And he said, that's a whole lifetime. And I said, I hope not. <laughs> but I consider myself incredibly fortunate to, uh, to have that relationship because it's rare in, in our business. It depends. In, in, I've, I've always respected hierarchy, and in that sense, I think I'm subservient to the director, and my job is to help them tell their story. So, uh, and, and uh, I, I, I believe that empathy is a is a great human emotion. So I try to understand where the director's coming from and how they wish to communicate, because some directors. And people have different ways of communicating. You know, we're all people, and different people like different ways of communicating. And if you're empathetic, uh, or try to be as empathetic as possible, then you get an idea of how the director wants to communicate. Because you know, Suzanne Beer wants to communicate a different way than Gary Ross, and the, the, you know, so they're all different. Which, for me, is absolutely fantastic. So I, I really, really enjoy that. Um, and usually, we figure it out in what would be the interview meeting for the, uh, in fact, it's kind of important when you have that meeting. Uh, so it, it, it's, it basically, you never take a job unless you've been in, a, in, in my, one of my roads, you never take a job unless you've been in the room with a director. And if, for me, if, if I leave that room and I don't know how to communicate with that director, then it's probably, a, a, you know, if I were to be offered the job, it's probably not a job I should do because, but it's like, you know, if you meet somebody new at a bus station or an airport and you start talking, you, you either communicate or you don't. And, and it's very important to communicate in this, in, in this job, I think.